Oh, how does it feel to go back to Australia during this pandemic situation and all? Look, it's, uh, I'm feeling overwhelmed. Um, first of all, I can't believe that I'm going back because my flight's been cancelled four times and then finally Gora Travel stepped in and helped me. So, yeah, I'm really thankful to them for allowing me to go back and uh, see my little one and keep my promise as well. He's very excited to see me. I'm so happy for you, sir. You. Oh, how did you come to know about us? Uh, one of my friends recommended Gora Travel, who travel with them as well, and he strongly said, you talk to them and then they will sort it out for you. How long have you been here and what is your uh, advice for those who are actually, again, looking forward to go back to Australia, sir? Yeah, there's only one advice, get in touch with Gora Travel, because the commercial airlines, it's very hard to get in. More than that, it's expensive and it's not that as organized as this one. I was really surprised to see how organized it is, but very pleased to see in, in, a, in a good way. Thank you so much, sir. ਤੇ ਕਿੱਦਾਂ ਇੰਡੀਆ ਚੱਲੇ ਅੱਜ ਇੰਡੀਆ ਚੱਲੇ ਆ ਜੀ ਅੱਜ ਫਾਈਨਲੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਦੇਰ ਬਾਅਦ ਓਕੇ ਤੇ ਜਿੱਦਾਂ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਗੋਰਾ ਟ੍ਰੈਵਲ ਤੋਂ ਟਿਕਟ ਬੁੱਕ ਕਰੇ ਕਿੱਦਾਂ ਗੋਰਾ ਟ੍ਰੈਵਲ ਦਾ ਪਤਾ ਲੱਗਾ ਤੇ ਕਿੱਦਾਂ ਦਾ ਐਕਸਪੀਰੀਅੰਸ ਰਿਹਾ ਭਾਜੀ ਪਤਾ ਤਾਂ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਇੰਟਰਨੈਟ ਤੋਂ ਲੱਗਿਆ ਸੀ ਜੀ ਹਾਂਜੀ ਤੇ ਐਕਸਪੀਰੀਅੰਸ ਮੈਂ ਕਾਫੀ ਵਾਰੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਕਾਲ ਕੀਤੀ ਆ ਕਸਟਮਰ ਕੇਅਰਸ ਨੂੰ ਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਵੀ ਅੱਗੋਂ ਕਾਫੀ ਵਾਰੀ ਕਾਲ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੈ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲੀ ਜਦੋਂ ਮੈਂ ਬੁੱਕ ਕਰਾ ਲਈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀਆਂ ਈਮੇਲਸ ਐਵਰੀਡੇ ਹੈਲਪਿੰਗ ਈਮੇਲਸ ਕਿ ਕੀ ਕੀ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਕੀ ਕੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਵਧੀਆ ਲੱਗਿਆ ਜੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਵਧੀਆ ਲੱਗਿਆ ਕਿ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਹੈਲਪ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਕੀਤੀ ਜੀ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਅੱਜ ਤੁਸੀਂ 10 ਅਗਸਤ ਨੂੰ ਇੱਥੇ ਖੜੇ ਆ ਥੋੜਾ ਜਿਹਾ ਸਾਡੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਪੈਸੈਂਜਰਸ ਨੂੰ ਦੱਸ ਸਕਦੇ ਕਿ ਤੁਸੀਂ 에어ਪੋਰਟ ਤੇ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਜਾ ਰਹੇ ਆ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਐਕਸਪੀਰੀਅੰਸ ਥੋੜਾ ਬਿਆਨ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਆ ਹਾਂਜੀ ਜੀ ਐਕਸਪੀਰੀਅੰਸ ਵਧੀਆ ਥੋੜੀਆਂ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਫੈਮਿਲੀਜ਼ ਦੇਖੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਇੱਥੇ ਫਿਲਹਾਲ ਤੇ ਤੇ ਅੱਗੋਂ ਇਹ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਚੈੱਕ ਇਨ ਬਹੁਤ ਈਜ਼ੀ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਆ ਬਾਕੀ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਹੈਲਪ ਲਈ ਹੈਗੇ ਹੋ ਜੇ ਕੋਈ ਡਾਕੂਮੈਂਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਰਹਿ ਗਈ ਜਾਂ ਕਿਦਾਂ ਆ ਉਹ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਦੱਸੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਵਧੀਆ ਲੱਗਿਆ ਜੀ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ thank you very much vire they all the best for your journey you. cheers bro. Hello everyone. It uh, today is Monday 20th of September and I am Christian Benitez and I will with a uh, Ash in Santalia. Uh, we are here in another session of uh, Gaura Travel Facebook Live. Today an important uh, topic uh, for traveling this year is dust of your passport. That means Uh, we are coming with kind of exciting news where we are going to uh, explain the ways that you will be able to travel potentially this year uh, from Australia to India, India to Australia uh, mostly. So if you are either on Facebook or Zoom, uh, fully welcome to type your questions. We will review it and we will be answering then again hi ash how are you today very good very good thank you very much chris and really looking forward to the session today okay so ash previously you sent me 
some kind of information. So I'm going to share my screen. And can we review the information about uh, what's happening with traveling this year? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So let's go for it. So we are talking about to a race to the end of pandemic. Absolutely, it's definitely a race and we want to get there as soon as possible. And it's looking like we will get there. Finally, there is some light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. So can you tell us, Ash, uh, how are we going to start to travel during this year? Was uh, the proposal of the Australian government to start opening borders? Yes. So as we all know that we are in Australia and we can only talk about what's the actual plan of Australia and the national cabinet uh, have laid out a plan. And in that, what they are saying that we will need to get to 80% of the eligible population, which is above 16 years of age, vaccinated in Australia. And then they will open up the borders uh, from there on. So that's, that's the simple message from the Australian government. And the good news is that we are currently already 72% first dose done nationally and uh, 43 or for, sorry 47 percent second dose oh. so 47 percent fully vaccinated which means we only need to go more 33 percent and we'll reach this 80 percent target perfect so more or less is the information that you are online in uh, mentioning this one correct so we can see that fully vaccinated is 46.67 which is almost 47 and the first dose is almost 72%. So it's not very far, as you can see. You know, we are more than halfway through, basically. In both fully vaccinated and first dose, we are almost 90% through. And also, as you can see there, it is written there, if this phase continues, the next phase will come in October and the consolidation phase will come in November. Okay, that's... Very exciting. So that start to means that at some point in October, November, we are going to reach that phases. And when we reach this, that phases, we are going to start to travel again. We're going to have less, uh, let's say, issues to travel. And we are going to have, uh, they're going to ease the exemptions. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's the that's the plan and that's what i can hear more and more by hearing our prime minister that his aim is to open up and these are these these benchmarks and these thresholds once it's reached then they will have to uh, go further and open up because basically uh, all of those people all of us who have uh, gone through this vaccination we are doing it so that we can get back to normal life. It's no point doing this vaccination and still being in lockdowns, still not able to travel, still not do all the things of we like to do going out and everything. It's We want to live a normal life. Everyone wants to live a normal life. So that's the roadmap, which when we reach these thresholds, then things will become normal, and including travel. Okay. So in that case, and this has some kind of uh, data that, that you were mentioned before. It's just 33% uh, more people to get fully vaccinated. And then the, we will reach even not first, but the second phase, the third phase, sorry. Uh, because we are at the moment in first phase. Correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. So talking about uh, one of the two major places where people travel in Australia or from to uh, Australia to India. Uh, what is the situation in Victoria? What is the situation in New South Wales? So yeah, I would like to talk about New South Wales first. They are racing ahead. 
they are definitely racing ahead. As you can see, they have, they have administered more than 8 million 884,000 doses and they have uh, reached more than 80% of first doses and now they are very quickly going to reach uh, 60, 70, 80% of second doses as you can see there. This data is taken from a very nice website called covidlife.com.au. I would encourage everybody to just go and visit that website, covidlife.com.au, and it shows all these dates in there. So as you can see, uh, New South Wales will reach 70% on 8th of October, which is just over two weeks from now, and it will reach 80% on 19th of October. And basically they have already announced that once they reach the 70 to 80 percent, everything will be open. And they are already starting a home quarantine trial, I think from this week, for next four to six weeks. Okay. And good. after that, they are going to most likely allow, if the trial, everything goes well, then they're going to allow people who are fully vaccinated to come and do home quarantine. Okay. In that case, it looks like the situation at the moment is more promising for New South Wales, just because more people is getting vaccinated in there at the moment. Is that right? Yeah, look, absolutely. Because the thing is, the more the population of a particular state and city are vaccinated, the more the confidence it gives to the government of that state to start allowing things to open up. So we all know that New South Wales had this uh, wave, which have, happens to be the biggest in Australia uh, for the, in the whole pandemic, rather, even bigger than what we went through in Victoria last year. And because of that, everybody came forward and took more and more vaccinations. So that's why their vaccinations rate are really high. And now they're going to reap the benefit of that, where they are going to come out of this first uh, before any other state in Australia. Perfect. So what is the situation now in Victoria? Where Victoria does have uh, some kind of similar uh, way to uh, go out and start to open travel? Absolutely. So Victoria is not very far behind. It's definitely a little bit behind than New South Wales. But as you can see that there's more than 6 million doses also administered in Victoria. And we know that yesterday the Premier announced a bit of a roadmap on the opening up of Victoria. And as we know, in Victoria also, we have reached 70% first dose already. And we are going to reach 80% first dose, I think, by this weekend, 26, 27 September. Now, one important point here I would like to mention, as soon as somebody takes first dose, it's just a matter of time that they will go and take the second dose. So for me, the first doses are more important because once, once, once our country reaches the first dose uh, threshold, then it's just a matter of time that they will get to the second one as well. Oh. So even going by Victoria, as you can see some dates, uh, these are second doses dates. So uh, it will reach 70% around uh, 17th of October and 80% uh, basically end of uh, November, I thought, but it's showing December here, but I thought it should be end of November. So I think somewhere in October to November, uh, it will reach 80%. Okay, so the good news is definitely the forecasts show that November will bring a totally different panorama as uh, we have at the moment. Like uh, the view or the landscape that we are uh, having at the moment uh, will be totally different in November. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so... The question, what's, what's next? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see what's next. So as you know that these are the four phases. I just want to summarize this before we take questions. So we are currently in the phase A, which is basically lockdowns, prepare, pilot, suppress. And I don't think so anyone needs to know more about that. So we're not going to talk more about that. The next phase is phase B. Third phase is consolidation phase. And the final phase is phase D. So in today's presentation, we are not going to talk so much about phase D also, because that's still some time away. 
and they haven't really given a threshold as to when the phase D will kick in. So there is a bit of ambiguity about phase D. Okay. But there is clear instructions about phase B and C, and that is what we are going to talk about more. Okay. Makes sense. So phase, the current phase, this is the phase A, that's where we are at the moment. Yes, and I don't think so anyone wants to know anything about it because <laughs> yeah. we all know how bad it is, basically. So what will happen when we will be in, for example, phase B? So yes, the so phase B is very important for people coming inside Australia again. It's not so much to do with anything for outbound travel, but the inbound travel, as some of you may know, has been restricted from last year and it got even further restricted this year on 14th of July. From 14th of July, the passenger caps to come into Australia was halved. And because of that, lots of flights have been cancelled and lots of people are not able to come to Australia because now, previously, there used to be 6,000 persons per week who were allowed to come. And that's been reduced by 50%. And now only 3,000 people are allowed to come into Australia on major cities, of course, uh, the government repatriation flights into Darwin is different, but the normal uh, flights, that commercial flights which operate, for them, the caps have been reduced to half. So as soon as we get to phase B, which is 70% of fully vaccination, then the, here it's clearly mentioned that they're going to restore the inbound caps, which means from 3,000, we will be again we will be able to go to 6,000 people who will be able to enter Australia. Wow. That's the first and major benefit. Yeah. The second one is they will start looking at allowing uh, some students and economic visa holders. Obviously, still going to be quarantined. Everybody will still be quarantined, but they will allow, start looking at that and allowing that, you know. And the final point that's going to happen at this phase B is they're going to start reducing quarantine requirements for vaccinated travelers. As already New South Wales is doing a pilot test and South Australia has already done the pilot test where they're looking at most likely seven days home quarantine for vaccinated travelers. So this is basically what's going to happen in phase B, which is going to be when we reach 70%. Okay, so people that got vaccinated will be have more like a rights to uh, come into the country or more easily will be able to come to the country and to have a uh, reduced quarantine arrangements as you are mentioning in the presentation like absolutely will... absolutely that's the incentive for people to get vaccinated and not only just incentive but the health uh, research shows that obviously getting vaccinated you are less likely to get the virus and you're less likely if you're not going to get the virus you pose very less risk to give it to others, basically. So the, the 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 health advice is clear that vaccinated travelers and vaccinated citizens are less of a risk than those who are not vaccinated. Okay. So what will happen when we reach the phase C? So yes, this is the most important phase, I would say, more important than even phase D. So in this phase, obviously, locally, they're saying there won't be any lockdowns. But the most important thing is they are going to abolish the caps completely for inbound travel for vaccinated people. So which means currently, even that 3,000 or 6,000 caps that is there will be completely removed, which means a, a proper flight with vaccinated travelers can come a full flight, which is going to definitely reduce the FAs, you know. Then the next biggest point that's going to happen is that they're going to lift the restrictions on outbound travel for vaccinated persons. So currently there is a ban in the whole of Australia that you cannot go out until you have exemptions. And what's going to happen in this consolidation phase is that ban is going to be removed and there will not be needing any exemptions to travel anywhere. And we could just travel like we did in the past. It doesn't mean that you will, when you come back, you will not need to quarantine. You will still may need to quarantine depending on certain countries that you are going. But for going out, you will not need to take any permission and you are free to travel as you like. 
So that's the biggest news that's going to happen when we reach that 80% fully vaccinated. Okay, that's that's a good uh, point, Ash, because we were here discussing with Anuja last week, uh, and she was explaining that at the moment, the people that has easily exemptions to travel is someone from us talking from Australia to India, for example, are basically uh, Indian passport holders without permanent residency or a citizenship, Australian citizenship. Uh, they are the most likely to travel. But when we reach uh, this phase, almost or oh, basically everyone, everyone. Will, will be able That's right, to everyone. Travel. We are going to go back to it. It seems like a dream because it's been so long that we've been locked in, but it's going to be like how we had before. If you had a valid passport and a valid ticket, depending on which country you're going, and obviously for India, there is no restrictions. Uh, as long as you have a Indian passport or an OCI, which is basically Australian passport with the overseas citizenship of India, then you can travel to India without any restriction. Okay. It, now again, I'm saying this doesn't mean that on the inbound, you may not need to quarantine. That's a separate topic. So don't please uh, get confused or take my words out of context. Here, what they are saying is they're going to allow outbound travel to everybody. But it doesn't mean that everybody will be allowed to come back without a quarantine. That's still a question mark, which we are waiting for more clarity. But that's the next point on this phase is they are going to have some countries with whom they will establish a bubble. In that one, it's very clear that when you go out to those countries and come back from those countries, there won't be any quarantine. Okay. Just like we had with New Zealand earlier in the year, they are talking the first country is most likely Singapore and could be other countries like Fiji, and nearby countries like Japan, Vietnam, these are some countries that they're talking about. And the bubbles between these countries and Australia means that you can go to these countries and come back from these countries without any need of any quarantine. But I think India will not be on that list immediately, but that doesn't stop you from traveling to India. And I feel that people can take advantage of that. And if they are planning to go to India, let's say for two months or three months, by the time that time comes to come back, I think Australia would have allowed you to come back without quarantine as well, which is more like next year, something like February, March, something like that. Okay. I have one question here. I want to take a, a step back. And in the point that we are talking about abolish caps on returning vaccinated travelers, mm -hmm. uh, we are talking about lift all restrictions on outbound travelers. That means if someone wants to go to India, they can go easily to from Australia to India. And if they are vaccinated, they can go to India and came back after that. And as they have abolished the caps, there are more people coming into the country. So if I vaccinate, I can go to India and come back without any trouble and no asking for exemptions. That is correct. So you will not need any exemptions to, anyways, right, coming back, there was no exemptions required for Australian residents and PR holders. Yeah. So even now, there is no exemptions required for anyone coming back if they are Australian residents or PR holders. Okay. What's stopping them from coming back right now is availability of flights and availability of seats and the cost of those flights and cost of those seats. What it's saying is because this when we reach 80 percent there won't be any caps so the the availability of flights and seats to come back to australia will be much higher so you will not have so much issues on coming back however it's not still clear whether on coming back you will be required to quarantine or not that's not that's not decided if you are going to a country with which australia doesn't have a bubble and most likely with india they may not have the bubble in the beginning but it doesn't stop you from traveling. That's the key point. Okay. Because the outbound travel ban will be lifted. So you are allowed to travel outbound and the flights for inbound will be available in much higher quantity because there won't be any cap for returning vaccinated travelers. So your travel from going and coming will become much more easier and much more accessible. However, on the way back, whether you will be required to quarantine or not, that's still a question mark. 
Okay, perfect. So moving forward, they are talking about final D that you say uh, there is no threshold for uh, this part of the phase. They are not saying. So yeah, it, this phase, final phase means everything goes back to normal how it was pre-pandemic. And there is no caps on inbound, no caps on outbound, no caps on vaccinated travelers, no caps on non-vaccinated travelers. Uh, so, but this phase, they have not defined anything when it will kick in. Okay. So there is no point talking about it. I personally think this phase will probably not happen until July next year, uh, but I don't think so. That stops anyone from traveling because once we reach phase C, as I just mentioned so many times, you will not require exemptions to travel out of Australia, even to India or even any part of the world. You can go anywhere you like, as long as you have a valid passport and visa and ticket for that country. Okay, perfect. So, what will happen when we reach the phases B and C by end of November, likely? Mid end of November? Very simple. There will be more and more demand of people wanting to travel. There will be less flights and tickets available because so many people would want to travel. So if you are really keen on wanting to travel, I think you should make the move and, and book some tickets because there will be a huge demand of people wanting to travel. The last two years, people haven't traveled. So there are lots of people who have lots of leaves that they want to encash and and want to use and also because of school holidays that comes up in December. So I think lots and lots of people will be traveling and they will take the view that they will go to India and relax for a couple of months, spend time with family, visit them, check how they are and then decide what to do in next year, you know, maybe February by that time. Uh, hopefully the quarantine requirements will be much less than what it is right now. Okay, so one important tip Ash is Everyone, we have been a uh, like a, we don't know much a uh, freedom to travel. It's really important that you check that your passport hasn't expired. Oh yes, <laughs> that's a very good point, Chris. And make sure that you get the passport renewed earlier right now, because soon the demand for renewal of passport will skyrocket, and it will take much longer for you to renew your passport. So if any of you don't have a well, passport, I would get it renewed as soon as possible. Okay. So, coming back, uh, Ash, uh, we have some questions from uh, the people that have joined us. Yes. So, is overseas travel going to be staggered and India will be behind in the line? So, as I said before, basically, no country will be stop from traveling outside. So that means from Australia to any country, you'll be allowed to travel once the ban is lifted. However, when you come back, whether you will be requiring to quarantine or not, that will depend on the situation in that country. Having said that, India is doing quite all right right now compared to what they were doing in April and May. So I don't necessarily think that India will be behind very much. But at the same time, I don't think so. They will be the first country or second country to be allowed to travel quarantine free. But you can still go to India and then come back to Australia and perhaps do a quarantine uh, if you really want to travel. Okay. So India is still on the list uh, to uh, able to go and to come back. Yes. Um, is the government giving out exemptions more easily these days? Absolutely. We have like got so many flight bookings in the last one month because from 10th of August, India has been reduced as low risk country uh, in the eyes of the Australian government. And they are giving exemptions much more uh, freely and much more uh, openly than what they were giving between April and August this year. So we are seeing a huge spike in people getting exemptions. And I think it's only going to get more and more easier. That's an important question, an uh, important topic that you mentioned there, Ash. And it's basically, okay, the, the exemptions are being more is to more likely to be eased. So at this point, uh, what's the offer from Gaura Travel? What's the availability of flights to travel to India, for example? 
Yes, so because as we can see more and more people are getting exemptions, we are trying to provide more and more options. So we have currently five airlines that's available to book on our website, goratravel.com.au. The first we have, which is the uh, a good price point, is on Etihad starting at $8.99. Then we have Qatar Airways start uh, a bit more than that at $9.89. Then we have Emirates at around $1,100. Then we have Sri Lankan Airlines. And then we also have our own charter flights. We have put in a charter flight on pre-Diwali on 29th of October for everybody who would like to go home and be in India with their family for Diwali. And we also have another charter flight end of November. And we are going to put more charter flights for December. So there is a plethora of options for anyone who wants to travel to India, and it's all available through our website. I think there are more than 100 dates available. On the other hand, earlier this year and last year, we only had a couple of dates available on each month, whereas now there is plethora of options and almost like the old days where you had so many flights to choose from. Okay. So when will students will be able to come to Australia? I think very soon, because I don't think so. Australia is planning to again abandon the students for the next whole year. So as we all know, the first season of students and the and the academic year starts in February, March. So next year, February, March is going to be a new, uh, new calendar year of education starting. So I think Australia is very keen to make sure that they don't uh, abandon that uh, year for the students and they will are, are really making head roads with trying to allow students to come into Australia. So I think come come January, I think students will definitely be allowed. Again, whether they will be quarantine free or not, that's a question mark. But I think they will be allowed to uh, travel to Australia come January 2021. Perfect. So there is an interesting question here from Rachna. And Rachna asks, in phase B, Let's reduce quarantine arrangements, uh, for example, on quarantine. Uh, what will happen if someone that is vaccinated, uh, a vaccinated adult, is traveling with an unvaccinated child? Is there any part of the cl clarity in the roadmap of the government about that? Absolutely. So at the moment, the Australian government is very clear that they are only focused on the adults. They are saying the child is much less of a risk to the whole country and to the whole society. That's why they have these targets of 80%, 70% based on adult population aged above 16. Although they are starting to give vaccination between 12 to 16, but they are measuring these targets based on the age above 16. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, I, because that's what their modeling has been provided by Doherty Institute, that it's above the age of 16, and that's what they are focusing on. So, in, in, in regards to this question, I think if an adult is fully vaccinated, traveling with a child will not have a problem because they are going to only look at the adult and their vaccination status rather than the child. Okay. So, do, Jasmine asked, do we need the exemption to go to India if we got vaccines? Uh, I guess if Jasmine is in Australia and she wants to go to India, it depends on her type of visa in Australia or the type of uh, she's PR or citizen or student. That is true. But at the same time, to go more deeper into this question, going out of Australia right now doesn't matter whether you're vaccinated or not. That's not the that's not the criteria because right now everybody is banned to go outside of Australia whether you are vaccinated or not doesn't matter. So you will need to apply for exemption any case right now and in your exemptions they will not consider whether you are vaccinated or not. That is not the criteria to give exemptions right now. The exemptions criteria is many many much in detail which I think you all can. Uh, watch our live show from last week when Anuja has explained more details about exemptions. And that's a different criteria. It's got nothing to do with vaccination. Australia cares about vaccination for inbound travelers. They don't really care so much for people going out. So right now, they are not really concerned uh, whether the person traveling from Australia to any country are vaccinated or not. 
In fact, they don't want anyone to travel because they want uh, everybody to remain here so that they don't need to try and bring them back from another country. But once our country here in Australia is 70% and 80% vaccinated, then they're going to remove that criteria and ban of outbound travel at 80%. Okay. So let's take some questions also, for example, from our friends on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, how are you operating flights with Malaysian Airlines when Malaysia is not permitted the transit for Indian citizens? Yes, so we have been uh, informed by Malaysia Airlines that this, is, this, this decision is expected to come very soon and uh, they are in very close contact with the Malaysian government and because of that we are uh, going ahead and uh, selling these flights, marketing these flights. It's of course uh, subject to government approval but our first flight from Malaysia is supposed to be on 1st of October and we believe that uh, the announcement from the Malaysian government is going to come before that, which will allow the citizens to transit from Malaysia. Okay, so do we need exemptions after Australia hit the vaccination targets? As we just discussed, once you reach 80%, once we reach 80% uh, in the whole of Australia, then the exemptions process will be scrapped and everybody with a valid passport and a air ticket can travel to any country in the world. Okay, so we have more questions here. Uh, what are the rules for visiting India? Uh, someone in Australia uh, is trying to go to India. Do they have to isolate or do quarantine, COVID test to go to India? Yes, very good question. So India has never had any uh, much of uh, issue with quarantine or isolation. They did one in the very beginning for one or two months and after that they scrapped it. What they replaced with is you need a RT-PCR test which has to be taken 72 hours before departure. As long as that's negative and you produce that certificate once you arrive to India, then that's all you need and then you'll be allowed to enter India and go and move out freely. So the main requirement is just to have the RT-PCR test, which is a COVID test, to be negative before travel. Okay. So are going, is going out of travel to have more charter flights in November? Yes, most likely we will. Uh, depends on the demand. So we have uh, already have one flight available in November and we, we will uh, most likely add more depending on the demand. Okay. Uh, many people are still asking if we need exemptions after we reach 80%. I think that was... Very clearly explained that after we reach 80%, Australia is going to scrap the rule to require exemptions to travel out of Australia. Um, Hannah Tiho on Facebook, if you can uh, give us more uh, explanation of your question, uh, she's saying, just wondering about temporary visa holders who were in India, but it's not a proper question. Do you know something about what's happening with temporary visa holders of Australian visas in India? Can they come to... So at the moment they cannot, they need to apply for exemptions. Uh, but I believe once we re reach 80%, then I think they will be also be allowed as long as they are vaccinated. So I would encourage those who are temporary visa holders in India, you should get vaccinated as soon as possible. If you're fully vaccinated, once Australia reaches the 80% threshold, the chances of you allow being allowed back into Australia is very high. Okay, so there, there is an interesting question here, Ash, and I think it's regarding our uh, travels from India to Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, Bipul Patel is asking us, Sydney is getting better. Mm -hmm. um, why uh, you are rescheduling to Adelaide? Okay. So the answer to that is Sydney, New South Wales government has reduced their caps up to the 31st of October. So they want to keep their hospital system, the health system available for the spike in cases. And because of that, they have reduced the caps even further. So they reduced by 50%, but 
So they used to allow 33,000 people a week to come into Australia pre-14 July, and they reduced it to 1,500 from 14 July, and then on September 8th, they reduced it to further 50%, and now only 750 uh, total uh, uh, people are allowed to travel into Sydney every week up to the 31st of October. So because of that, it's very uh, difficult to operate any flights into Sydney, and most of the airlines have canceled their flights. As such, we were very uh, fortunate and also very um, uh, keen to work out a solution, better solution for our customers so that they can still come back to Australia. And then we worked out this solution with Malaysia Airlines, which is giving us the flights every week from 1st October up to the 29th of October. And we are bringing the people back into Australia in the month of October itself. On the other hand, if we will wait for Sydney, then it has to be in November, and we don't even know what those rules will be right now. We will have to wait for it to know what those rules will be. So we thought that it's better to give this solution to our customers right now so that they can come back into Australia even via Adelaide. Perfect. Uh, still, uh, some people asking about a uh, if there is going to be any exception in November, or they have to apply any exception in November, it depends if we reach phase B and C. Correct. So phase C is the most important. Phase B is not so important for outbound travel. So once we reach 80% double vaccination, which is supposed to happen in November, the outbound travel ban will be removed, which means you will not require any exemptions to go outside of Australia. We're repeating again, once we reach 80%, then you will not require exemptions to go out of Australia, and then you can travel to any part of the world, including India, without reading any exemptions from Australian government. Now, this doesn't mean that when you come back, you will require not require quarantine. We don't know the exact rules when you come back, what will be applicable, but it's highly likely if you're vaccinated, then even coming back, you will be having a much less uh, need of quarantine than what is there currently. Okay. We have uh, one question on Zoom from Texas, uh, and she's as, oh, he's asking, uh, I can go in the hour, my sister marries, so there is no dates, there is no type of visa in the question. Look, we are not the authority to take a, a decision on that. All I would recommend you, if you have any details on that, you submit it to uh, the Australian government and give as much documentation as you can to support your application. Usually, if you will, you will apply that you will go more than three months, the chances are very high that you will get the exemption. Most of the people who are applying to travel for more than three months are getting the exemptions. Okay. A, a good question for Monica George is, are we able to book return flights at the moment? I noticed it's just one way of availability. That is correct. And that's how it will be for some time to come because there is so much uncertainty on the inbound travel into Australia that most airlines are only giving one-way tickets. And that's what we are doing the same. So either you can get one way from here to India or one way from Australia to uh, from India to Australia. That's how it will remain, I think, for the next two or three months. I wouldn't get my hopes up that you will get return tickets available anytime soon. Most likely that will happen next year when things are much more normal, there are much more certainty what the policies will be. But for the rest of this year, it will be mostly one-way tickets. So, good question, Nadi. Uh, where can we watch our last week's recordings? There's a, a lot of valuable information there because last week we were talking how you can apply uh, for travel exemptions. Uh, so, I highly recommend you uh, to visit at the moment or Facebook Live. Um, basically, somewhere this week, we can add uh, links on our website to each Facebook Live and you can watch it in, from there. Uh, so at the moment, it's mostly on Facebook. You can try to see, we will create a, a kind of album for you and for easy access. Uh, we will create also links on our website that you will be able to uh, access uh, have access to the previous uh, meetings on our Facebook Live. Uh, Rajna, in India, most of the people are getting AstraZeneca vaccine 
under the brand name COVID Shield. Can there be any problem with respect what vaccine or what brand of vaccine uh, a fully vaccinated vaccinated person has received in India? No. Uh, basically, AstraZeneca under the name of COVID Shield is very much authorized by World World WHO. And it's a matter of time. Australia hasn't declared right now which vaccines they are going to accept. So we are waiting for this advice. But I know that for sure that in Europe, they are accepting Covishield and they are allowing people with the Covishield vaccine to enter Europe. So we expect the same thing will be doing in Australia. We just have to wait for that uh, decision to come and then, then it will be all clear. Okay, let's pick more. Questions here. Uh, Lots of questions, huh? Yeah, yes, today, uh, very active, the people today. Mm -hmm. uh, which is an economic visa in, fa in phase B, like regional skill visa or business visa? Look, I'm not an expert in that, <laughs> so I, I, I won't be able to answer that in terms of which specific visa. All it advises is that there will be much more uh, uh, flexibility on allowing students and economic visa holders to travel, whereas right now they're not allowing at all. So I think it will be improved. Okay. A interesting question around here. Just give me a sec. I've got lost. Um, what happened if we want to return in January? Return from where? <laughs> I, I, I imagine from India. <laughs> okay. Yeah, look, opportunities will be much more. I mean, what, what you're seeing right now is very much a very limited capacity of flights and cabs. I think in January, there will be much more availability and opportunity to return back from India, for sure. Perfect. Uh, Everybody is... For Indian-made co-vaccine, it is going to be an issue these days. I think it's similar to the COVID shield. Yeah, I think COVID shield should not be a problem. Any other vaccines in India is a, is a question mark that what what whether it will be recognized in Australia or not. But I think COVID shield, which is the same as AstraZeneca, I'm sure that will be fine. That will be fine. So if you have more questions, please send it uh, wherever you are connected with us uh, at the moment. Uh, you are on Facebook or if you are on Zoom, uh, we are here to answer your questions, to help uh, to answer the most of the questions. Let me see, you have receiving economic visa. Okay, I think we, for temporary visa holders, plus valid travel exemption, is it good to move ahead with the first October flight from Chennai to Perth? So the someone with temporary visa holder plus valid travel exemption. So can this person book a ticket? Yes, absolutely. As long as you have an exemption to travel from us from India to Australia, no matter what visa you're holding, as long as you have the exemption right now, you can book for sure. And lots of people book. It's only if you don't have an exemption, whether they will be allowed or not, that's going to be happening in the future. But right now, anybody for traveling from India to Australia or Australia to India, if they have exemptions, that means that you are allowed to travel. As simple as that, no matter what visa you hold. Okay. This is an interesting question for Leah Matthias. Uh, my family is in Melbourne. And I a PR holder. Where can I fly to Melbourne without quarantine, preferably from Bombay, as I live in Goa? Okay. <laughs> well, as far as I know, even the Prime Minister of Australia cannot come back to Australia without quarantine. Right now, he has gone to America, and I believe when he comes back, he is going to quarantine in his uh, in his uh, Kiribilla house, which is in Canberra. So at the moment, nobody can come to Australia without quarantine. You have to quarantine, no matter where you where you land, in which state you land, doesn't matter. So unfortunately, can't help you there. 
If you want to avoid quarantine, then you should wait for some more time and get double vaccinated. Then in the future, the chances are that you may be allowed to do a home quarantine if you're fully vaccinated. That That's a good point because uh, Leah Matthias is uh, 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 clarifying that is fully vaccinated. Yeah, so I think if you don't want to quarantine right now, then wait for some more time. And when there is uh, Australia reaches 80%, then there are higher chances that you'll be allowed to come back without quarantine. Okay. Uh, more interesting questions today. A mm -hmm. uh, question about exemption. Uh, can we reapply if it is declined for first time? And how much is the gap required to reapply, if possible? I've heard people applying 10 times, 12, 12 times. So I think there is no limit to how many times you can apply and reapply. However, they say that uh, when you reapply, you should provide some extra evidence, extra supporting documents. Otherwise, it will be rejected again. So it's the same thing. Like, as we, as we hear, there is a saying that uh, if you keep doing the same thing again and again without changing, that's called insanity. So you have to apply again with some supporting documents more that you did not provide the previous time. Then there is a chance that they will look into it and per perhaps even approve it. There are many people who have got the approval once they have applied for second, third, fourth, fifth time. But because they've got the approval, uh, it means that they must have provided some extra evidence and then they got the approval. So when we were with Anuja previously, uh, she always said, apply as many times as you can, make your case stronger. Correct, that's it, that's the way. Okay, we're looking for Charanjit question. Give me a sec because looks like it's a question that we have pending, but um, it doesn't appear. Charanjit, you can, on Facebook, you can, present your question because it's not uh, showing up on our uh, Facebook. Uh, please redo your question and we will be happy to answer. Uh, best possible option to travel from India to Sydney for a family, two adults, two kids. Uh, what's the best option uh, for a family of four, two adults, two kids uh, to, for traveling from India to Sydney? Okay, well, I would like to say something which nowadays we hear quite a lot from our leaders, the premiers, the prime minister. They, they often say the best vaccine is the vaccine that's available now. Similarly, I would say the best flight or ticket is what's available now. At the moment, we don't have any flight that's available to Sydney, but we do have options available to Perth and Adelaide on Malaysia Airlines starting from 1st October. And I would recommend to take those slides because there is no certainty of to what flights will be available in the future into Sydney. So that's all I can say. Okay. Uh, there is an interesting question for people, but, uh, but I want to make my own first. Mm -hmm. Do we have any cancellations from ex India, uh, India to Australia flights uh, from people that booked with us between September and October? Uh, we have had flight cancellations, however, we are reaccommodating them into our flights on Malaysia Airlines. So we are not leaving our customers in limbo and we are giving them the first priority to book and be reaccommodated on these new flights on Malaysia Airlines. Okay, so it's like rescheduled rather than That's cancellation. Correct. That's okay, correct. okay. Because his question is, New South Wales cap is how by 50 percent uh, that's true but how all the flights from october and september got rescheduled at least 50 percent of the people should travel to sri lankan our, our line uh, and he's asking if there is any cancel so that's why i came with the question yeah so the way it goes is it's not that simple as just 50 percent because basically what happens is when the caps reduce then the number allowed on each flight gets reduced even more. So just to give an example, previously, New South Wales in the beginning of July used to allow around 40 people on each flight, which is still very small because in an aircraft you can get up to 300 people. Then on the 14th of July, that got reduced to half. 
So that got reduced to around 20 people, where only 20 people were allowed to fly on each particular flight, which we still operated many flights under that particular situation. And now they are only allowing 10 people on a flight, so that 40 got reduced to 20 and 20 got reduced to 10. So now, unfortunately, only allowing 10 people on an aircraft which can accommodate 300 is exorbitantly uh, un commercial you know it's not it's it's price prohibitive then if we will if we will try to operate that flight then each person will probably need to pay thirty thousand dollars and i don't know whether many people will be interested in that hence the reason it's very uh difficult to operate those flights right now yeah definitely uh, there is a important question on facebook from culprit singh mm -hmm. And I think this is something that we had not mentioned today. Mm -hmm. uh, so great question, Kulpreet. Does interstate travel from Perth to Sydney is allowed? I think Kulpreet is asking this question because we are having some kind of flights to Perth or to Adelaide, uh, moving people to Sydney or Melbourne. Can you explain a little? Uh, how is the mechanic here uh, for them to reach the final destination? Absolutely. It's a very good question. And uh, mm -hmm. I will explain you in detail about that. So basically, any person coming into uh, Australia, in Perth, in Melbourne, in Sydney, in uh, uh, Adelaide, in Brisbane, anywhere, they have to come and stay in a hotel, hotel right now under hotel quarantine. So basically, as soon as they come and stay in a hotel and they complete that hotel quarantine, which is 14 days, and then immediately from there travel to another state, then it's considered that they are coming from a green zone because they have just gone through a hotel quarantine. And immediately after finishing the hotel quarantine, they should be taking a transport to the airport. And from there, they should be going into the next state wherever they are traveling. As long as they can do that, then they will not have any problem in going to the other state. And these information you can find in online with most of the state authorities, you will see that staying in hotel quarantine and then going into another state is considered a green zone. As such, there is no issues in doing that. Perfect. Um, any Flights available to India in October, I think you already mentioned. Several flights. Just go and check on our website. There's yeah. plenty of options. Did you mention already were around four to five airlines and yes. different options? Correct. Perfect. Um, one question. I have received a travel exemption recently on their critical skills a week back but the visa has not yet been finalized. I have tried contacting DHA through email and um, by telephone. What can I do to get a priority visa processing? How long do you think that I have to wait? <laughs> I think this is a little bit out of our uh, <laughs> league, you know, because it's something to do with the immigration department. Uh, I think it will be best if you take advice from an immigration lawyer who can help you further in this regard. We are not experts in that area. Anything to do with flights and travel that we can help you. But unfortunately, in that this visa query, you'll have to uh, contact an expert. Okay, we have to reach uh, all the questions that we have uh, at the moment. Uh, basically, we have been covered on Facebook and also for our friends on Zoom. Uh, Ash, I want to thank you uh, today for being my guest in this uh, Facebook Live. Uh, just a friendly reminder to everyone that know we are doing uh, the Facebook Live every Monday, uh, try to bring topics uh, that are really important uh, about travel exemptions, so how you can travel through uh, between Australia and India, uh, we are going to bring more and more valuable information. So from now, the invitation from next Monday with another important topic uh, where I will have another important guest uh, that will be full of information. 
So thank you very much, Ash, and something else that you want to add, please. Well, dust off your passport and be ready to travel. That's what I would like to say. Get your passport renewed, get ready, book travel, and get ready to travel. Okay. Thank you very much. Ash. Thank you. So, how does it feel to go back to Australia during this pandemic situation and all? Look, it's, uh, I'm feeling overwhelmed. Um, first of all, I can't believe that I'm going back because my flight's been cancelled four times and then finally Gora Travel stepped in and helped me. So, yeah, I'm really thankful to them for allowing me to go back and uh, see my little one and keep my promise as well. He's very excited to see me. I'm so happy for you, sir. So, how did you come to know about us? Uh, one of my friends recommended Gora Travel, who travelled with them as well, and he strongly said, you talk to them and then they will sort it out for you. How long have you been here and what is your uh, advice for those who are actually, again, looking forward to go back to Australia, sir? Yeah, there's only one advice, get in touch with Gora Travel, because the commercial alliance, it's very hard to get in. More than that, it's expensive and it's not that as organised as this one. I was really surprised to see how organized it is, but very pleased to see in, in, a, in a good way. Thank you so much, sir.